Pastor George Borkhart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke Wednesday takes on deplatforming. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Share our content and donate. Your tax-deductible gift to Higher Things keeps us passing on that faith to the next generation. And they need, we need, this gospel in these dark times. Woke Wednesday means we have Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of Higher Things, former uh, public school teacher and our resident expert on wokeness and all things woke. Hi, Erica. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I worry when you call me a resident expert. I'm just a, I'm just a lady with the internet. You know what I mean? I'm just so, a lady with the internet. Deplatforming occurred in the 80s when platform shoes went out and they were... No. <laughs> no. Right? No. Where's that sound effect you were showing me before we started shoeing? You need no. to do that sound effect on yourself. Can't do that. Can't do that. Tell us about deplatforming. <laughs> All right. So deplatforming is 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 not has nothing to do with footwear. Okay. Um, you can kind of think of this as another way of being canceled or another group being canceled. So to be deplatformed um, or deplatforming, also known as no platforming, is a form of political activism. Um, or sort of preemptive restraint by an individual, a group, or an organization. And the purpose of that is to shut down controversial speakers or speech or to deny them access to a venue which expresses their opinion. So the, they would be denied a platform, whether it be a social media type platform or, or the opportunity to speak somewhere. So um, this could be disinviting a speaker from an event and this happens relatively frequently at college or university campuses due to whatever controversy may surround their views. Um, social media deplatforming is to remove an undesirable person's access to social to a social media platform like Twitter or Facebook or you know the big ones, Instagram, um, because of whatever messages they deliver to an audience. So deplatforming may involve not just banning the user or discontinuing their service but also removing any existing content that they may have previously created and put out there on the platform. So there you go. It has nothing to do with shoes, my friend. Who has been deplatformed? Can you give us some examples of it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there are um, several notable examples um, going back a few years when um, sort of deplatforming at the, um, the college level and university level began to take place. So at Brown University, and I think it was 2016, um, Janet Mock, who is the TV host and transgender rights activist, she withdrew from a speaking event after students protested, but not because of Mock's speech, but because, pro, um, because the pro-Israel group Hillel co-sponsored the lecture. So that resulted in deplatforming. Um, another one that's relatively famous is California State University at Los Angeles and Ben Shapiro. Um, so critics uh, spoke vociferously out against the conservative writer and claimed his proposed lecture was about microaggressions. Another woke one today that we've, we've talked about. Black Lives Matter and safe spaces was not a debate, but an attack. And the university subsequently revoked his invitation. Um, so that was that was another example of deplatforming. Um, the, there's another example of at Virginia Tech, a guy named Jason Riley was a professor who was invited, who invited the Wall Street Journal. Um, sorry, a professor who invited him. He's a Wall Street Journal columnist. Um, his invitation to speak was revoked over concerns of a controversy because he had written about race issues. Um, Riley, the, the speaker, was Black, also wrote a book called Please Stop Helping Us, How Liberals Make It Harder for Blacks to Succeed, um, and that received criticism, and he was subsequently asked to not, to not speak. Um, of course, 
one of the biggest recent events uh, was in social media when uh, President Trump was uh, deplatformed, right? Um, so that's an example of social media deplatforming. Um, so following the violent invasion of the U.S. Capitol, several social media networks um, took moves to kick the president off of Twitter and Facebook um, to put an end to his activities um, so that he was essentially banished from those from those platforms um, saying, and their, their, um, their reasoning, Twitter and Facebook's reasoning was that his, uh, president Trump's tweets violated, um, uh, the safety or glorified violent, violent policies. Um, and subsequently they felt justified and like they were inciting violence basically. Um, however, there's been criticism back, right, that like Twitter, for instance, um, allows the Chinese embassy accounts that talk about genocide of people in their own area online, right? So there's like, there's a lot of um, controversy all over all this deplatforming stuff. So a lot going on there. Um, so my question for you, because I've actually gotten these questions a couple of times, Pastor Borkhart, is... Um, it's not a huge leap from here to start thinking that, hey, can Christians be deplatformed? Um, we are a um, a, a Christian uh, nonprofit, um, and several nonprofits, Christian nonprofits, have gotten kind of worried. Um, should we worry about being deplatformed as Christians? Is someone going to take away our ability to talk about Jesus on our website um, or on our app? Um, should Christians fear deplatforming, Pastor Burkhart? What do you think? Uh, fear. Hmm. Fear. I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't think that we should fear the one that can throw us off of Twitter. I don't think we should fear the one that could throw us off the internet. I don't think we should fear the one that can kill the body. We should fear the one that can throw both body and soul into hell, says Jesus. So, um, I think that uh, we should expect it. I think it's going to happen. Um, if it doesn't happen, I'll be surprised in my lifetime. We are so uh, sort of, we don't know what persecution looks like. And so we don't understand um, how it's going. I saw a great meme the other day of Christians being upset with with uh, Chick-fil-A when they buckled on something. And it was the, it was <laughs> the Iranian Christians going, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it's like, right. Uh, We're so, getting beheaded over here. Right. So yeah. like, yeah. so like what I, I think is that we should expect to be deplatformed. We should be surprised that we're not going to be, if we're not, we should, we should take steps to protect ourselves and try to do the best we can to fight it. But, um, the end is not, uh, uh, the end of the world as we know it is not a universe where everybody's singing hymns of praise to, to God, all oh, praise to thee, my God, this night, that's not going to happen. The the end of the, the end of the world as we know it is is a place where God goes. Shall I find faith on earth? Jesus says, "Shall I find faith on earth?" So we should expect a platform, and we should not be surprised by it. That doesn't mean we don't fight it. Uh, fight the good fight with all your might, but um, that 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 doesn't mean that uh, uh, we shouldn't expect it. It's it's gonna happen. We're gonna get. We're, we're the scales are really weird. Um, that's, and that's demonstrated by Twitter's stuff. This is bad, but genocide, you know, we haven't gotten around to our community standards on that yet. So, I mean, it's right. just a very weird sort of, um, sort of thing. And, and it's inconsistent and we don't, we see it as, we see the inconsistency as Christians. We need to teach the inconsistency to our children. We need to fight that. The, the, the battle needs to go on in the ears of our kids, and our and the young people because they're the ones that have sort of uh, a whole generation of kids have, have have sort of sucked in the sponge of this woke religion next week um and yeah, that is um next week. yeah and and they're they they don't see those two things as as sort of um contradictory to their faith to their faith lift that mug again Left it. I was going to say, you're not the only one who can do product placement. Store.hirethings.org slash merchandise. Hirethings.org slash merchandise. Get that. Get a cup that looks like this. You want a cup that looks like this. 
Let me help me win my bet with Patrick. You want a cup that looks like this? Higherthings.org slash merchandise. Buy today. Help us, even if we're canceled, to continue bringing the gospel. Final thoughts, Erica. Well, it was just going to be this, that, um, gosh, while we can, we better proclaim that gospel as loud and as much as we can to as many people as we can reach. That's all I got. Erica Jacoby is the face that runs the place known as Higher Things, the little nonprofit that could, uh, the best Lutheran youth organization on the planet. Erica, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. You don't know it, but you're starting to. How very, very evil the culture is, which would suppress and kill the faith of Jesus. But when you experience it, Blessed are you when men revile you and speak all sorts of evil or against you, because such is the way they pre- treated the prophets who were before you. But the good news in all of this is, uh, take they our goods, fame, child, and Twitter account. These all th- be gone. The victory has been won. The kingdom ours remaineth. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short.